Welcome to Owl's Lounge and Mac. My name is John. We are currently about, what, we 30 miles offshore, Steve? Yeah, about that. 100 foot of water, Gulf of Mexico, Left Bank Pass. It looks like you can go that way, but you can go and tell. Waves are coming from that way, so we uh, a little bit off of close to Venice, I guess. In that area, so about 100 foot of water. We've caught 13 inch mangroves so far. 12 inch late snapper. So today it's me and Steve. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let me get the camera set up and see if we can catch some big ones. We're actually really trying to catch Gag Grouper today. We've, uh, I think this spot, this area, we've caught a 26 inch one in March and they were out of season. So I figured we'd start here, see what happens. Little baby. Showing pretty good on the. Got to be a bunch of snapper there. We need some gags. They just are a lot over there. There's a hummus of flying fish. Flying fish are a good sign. Yeah, they were all right over out there for messing them. Came in to cut bait. That one big enough? No. Probably about eight inches. And that was damn right, baby. <laughs> really? I mean, it was not those little small right, things. Right, little got. small he made, filters. He, he took it, I mean, it was on the way down. He grabbed it. <laughs> Hopefully, you know who doesn't show up with that around. Save this. He never showed up last weekend. Huh? We'll see what happens this week. We'll cut bait down. Feels like a decent ish snapper. Seems like we're over a pile of lanes and mains. There's a lot going on down there. There's a lot for sure. The lanes in the Gulf of Mexico only have to be about 10 inches. Yes. And he is about 11. I think they'd be a little bigger out here. Yeah, right. Mm. Barely bigger than what we were catching on our <laughs> yeah. So we're in a hundred foot, yeah. hundred and two foot. Probably need to get to like one twenty to catch some red snapper. Yeah, it says it's not really moving. It says zero to point three to point four. Hopefully, this isn't a red grouper. Yeah, it's showing up now. That's what I caught that on, was cut. Well, at least they're eating it, right? Yeah. 
Right. So we moved just a little bit. That was, yeah, I could feel it in the pole. Steve just got broke off. We didn't really have the cameras on, so we're going to re rig and drop back down. I'm going to put a pin push down. Drop a big pinfish down. Let's see what happens. We're showing some stuff on the sonar, so. Yeah. Is it in the rocks? Grouperish, it looks like. Oh, it's swimming up now. Is it swimming up? Yeah. That's a good thing. Uh, it's a weird thing. Oh. Yeah. oh. oh. <laughs> it's not swimming oh. up. <laughs> the sharks are down there. God, look how far up he got it. I know. Holy crap. Get cheeks out of that. Oh, uh, man. It was a red, though. Isn't that, isn't that a red grouper? Yeah. yeah. It was probably a 16 inch red grouper. Well, the tax man is here. Straighten my hook out. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> and that's no small hook. Fairly small. That would be. Interesting. Yeah. I was playing tug of war. Yeah, you were. Yeah, with the shark. Yeah. <laughs> that's what was going on right there. And then he finally got it. And then that's when it broke loose. Yeah, like that. It's coming up now. <laughs> hey. That's why you should always be rolling the camera, buddy. That's a 17 inch. Sweet. That's a good fish. Dead thread fin on a knocker. Yeah, throw that jig down there. What are these? Yep. Guess if we can't make it to 120 feet, a dozen of those would be good. Huh? So that'll take the sting out. Yeah. Uh, I was pitching towards the front of the boat. Catch many more of those, you're gonna have to get your fishing pole out. So I didn't have the camera on. I just got the biggest keeper of the day, a 17 inch mangrove snapper. She's using a knocker rig. It's like a one and a half ounce knocker. A piece of dead thread fin. Pitch it up into the current, let it sink to the bottom, leave the bail open, let them take it, see what happens. That one actually hooked it like in its chin too. I mean, he grabbed it, grabbed that thread fin, and when I flipped the bail over, it must have just chin hooked him. It wasn't even in his mouth. The only thing is, it's so windy, this trolling motor is not really holding us very good over the spots. Snapper. Hopefully it's not a dead, stupid right? red grouper. Oops. Don't be a red grouper. Looks That's like good. a grouper. Go ahead and let him. What is it? Oh, oh. Old red grouper. Fire truck. That's a big one too. Dang, the way it was fighting, I wasn't. I was thinking it might not be. So get a picture anyway.
Push, 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 push. He's talking for the picture. Yeah. <laughs> Let me back in the water. <laughs> this may be snapper. Golly, really? Freaking red grouper. I thought for sure that was a snapper. He gone. Definitely looked like snapper at first on the machine. I'm gonna try the one ounce. Find it. You think you got it? I think it's good. It's a good hit. I'm using the one ounce knocker again with the just the dead bait on there. See if I can if it is snapper up in the column, they may grab it before it hits the bottom, keep it away from the grouper. We didn't need to come this deep for these. I was kind of hoping that was ARS down there. Whatever grabbed your pinfish had to be a grouper or something. Yeah, it was pretty close to the bottom, but I hadn't quite gotten all the way to the bottom. And they could be. I mean, it looks like ARS. Cause they look, they look like they're up in the column. I mean, they're up 30 foot off the bottom. But we've had grouper hit that far off the bottom before too. That hit off the bottom. Ooh, that's a good fish. That's a real good fish. That could be snapper. That could be target species. American red snapper. I have to wake my wife from her nap and see if she can get the net. Hey, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Leah can sleep anywhere. <laughs> Please don't be a grouper. Nope, oh, look at that. Dude, look at the size of this one. That's a 24 inch red snapper. Alright then. Off the bottom. Boom! On the bottom. Off the bottom. Didn't make it to the bottom. I was kind of slowing it down. Thanks, babe. 
Yeah, buddy. And maybe 22 inch. Told you it looked like Red Snapper. Nice. No. Dead. Dead? 21 and a half. What's the matter? That's about the size of the ones from last weekend, then. That's definitely right to knock down there. The frozen thread pin on a one ounce knocker. Definitely red snapper. Yellow drum So battery says it's at 100%, but the low battery light keeps coming on. None of the circuits are tripped or anything. Everything says it's charging, so not sure. Alright, we're headed back in. It was uh, extremely rough, so we came in the Venice jetties instead of going back in Big Bass. So now we got a long ride back, but at least we're dry and don't have to uh, get beat up for 40 miles. Well, I got beat up for 30 miles on the way back in. John's dream headed toward your bridge there. I wonder if he can show. Yeah, third, don't mind the man. Friday night after 7 p.m., 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. Give me a couple of moments to get it clear. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you, sir. Cool. He has to actually go out. I think he goes on to the bridge. Yeah, he's got to go on to the bridge to open it. So did he say it was only only able to open until 7 p.m.? It's on demand after that. I think if you outside of those hours, it's probably like every half hour or something. Okay. Well, we're right at 4.30, so. Do not drag anchor. <laughs> Don't drag your anchor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here we come. Really not all that many. No, just because you have the it, thing on top? Yeah, the radar. It's too low for the radar yeah, to go through. Tight. It would be, yeah, not ideal to try. Oh, yeah, wow. You don't want to hit that. It's, it's pretty low. Oh, this, oh, I see. It swings both sides. Uh, right? Yeah. Not just one. It pivots in the middle. Of wow. Our old boat, we could go under it. I used to get mine have my teeth off right. and go under it, but I didn't have the radar. I think you and I fished down here one night for snook. Yeah. Caught that little baby Goliath and one keeper snook, I think. Yeah. That was off your boat. Yeah, the 24. This guy with the flags is going to be happy. Yeah, he didn't have to call it in or take his flags down. Now, do you have to wait for him to, like, get or just go when you have room? I think you can still when you got room. Is that opening on this side? Why do you go on the other side? 
mean that kind of way. But he's what trying to go in the middle, babe. Yeah, no, this is the channel, actually. You can't, he can't, oh, can't, go, can't over go over there. Oh, so. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. Kind of a tough day out there, but we did get some dinner. Nice little red snapper. He was like 20, 21 inches, something like that. Super easy to clean, just outline it, stay on this back bone. Pindones out of here. Oh, there you are, buddy. <laughs> get it. Get it. Come a little closer. You can get it. <laughs> Thank you. Are you special? There you go. You guys don't have one of these yet and you clean snapper, you need to get one. I'll put a little link in there. So you can grab one for yourself too because it does make cleaning these guys so much easier. I used to switch back and forth between a uh, regular Dexter serrated. Sometimes on those bigger ones you gotta a bigger snapper you got to get through the pin bones and your regular dexter didn't do a bad job but these are so much nicer you ready for some more buddy yeah Piggy. And get the. That's all I got, buddy. When he wants something, he'll uh, chatter his jaw real quick.
try to harvest all we can out of these guys. Just can't get them all year. We gotta get it under control up there. Got it. I don't think I need any hole. Okay. Well, I may do a mangrove hole. Look at that guy hole. Should have brought my other knife down. This serrated knife doesn't do a bad job of scaling. It's not ideal. Fork probably would work better, but. Near the drum circle, it's the Siesta Key. We went a couple times when we were staying out there. Scrap. The ladies scrap. Yeah, I was going to do the whole bucket or the whole. Uh, cart thing but we didn't catch so much so get a bucket be easier other than not being real appetizing looking do the gills make the fish bitter too I think someone said if you leave them in no, There's a reason like, for I've taking them out. This, like the old uh, wives' tale about, they used to call snook soap fish. Yeah, you can't cook that with the skin on. With the skin on, but I don't know that the scales would do that. I mean, I think they're just kind of not gross. the scales, the the gill plates. Oh, oh. Um, I think it makes it bitter or something. I, it might. Maybe it's just a lot. There's a lot of still some a lot of blood in it. Maybe there's a lot of blood and crap. That's the only one you want to hold right. Yeah. With the heart, buddy? You can't even see that. He's like, I want more than the heart, little chintzy sucker. I'm not a scavenger. Well, maybe he is. <laughs> no, <I'm old. laughs> oh, my <laughs> <laughs> they're vicious. Holy crap. Look at that thing. That's crazy. <laughs> they're big, too. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Look, they're all the way over there. Tearing that thing apart. Gone. But they don't eat the crap you get, for well, sure. Welcome back everybody. We're gonna do a little whole fried mangrove snapper Let me show you the setup So we've got our outdoor burner got our oil this is a uh, Wok pan a flat bottom wok pan and I don't have a regular deep fryer. So 
we're going to use this. This is the throats from the red snapper. Took the scales off with a fork, kind of made a mess, had to go outside. My wife was giving me some frowny eyes when I was doing it, but you can see they're really big scales. So, and here is our 17 inch mangrove snapper. We gutted them, took the gills out. I'm gonna put some slices in them. I'm gonna season it with some Everglades seasoning. If you know, you know. And I'll probably put a little bit of cornstarch on there too to get the outer skin nice and crispy. So let me get this prepared and we'll get the frying going. Check out that cool knife that uh, my brother-in-law made with an antler bone he found in the woods. He bought a bubble blade online and put that together. Really cool. Got a nice, nice fit to it. So I'm just going to score this. Right down to the rib cage. So I can get some seasoning in on the meat. It makes it a little bit easier to eat too. It comes right apart. Scales are everywhere. the other side here these I'm just gonna season and there's no scoring needed because that skin will get all crispy you can actually eat all that too and it's pretty pretty tasty Seasoning from the cutting board. And I'm going to try to get some cornstarch on here. And it looks like powdered sugar when you do it like this, but. Cornstarch should help it crisp up nicely. Let's get that fire going. All right, be very careful putting this in. I turned the heat off too, just in case we get any splatters. I don't want anything to flame up. Let's get this bad boy in there.
All right, guys, we got it all cooked. Check out that beautiful sunset in the background there. All right, it's gonna be super hot, but we'll try it a little bit end piece. That is the American Red Snapper collar. Again, we descaled it, a little Everglades, a little cornstarch on there, a little crisp. <laughs> it's better than fried chicken. There's a little piece of the skin and some meat of that mangrove snapper. You can see it's still steaming. Mm. Nothing beats whole fried snapper. I can tell you that. It's super good. That Everglade season is not too salty. It's really good. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Try to get a new video out every week, either cooking something or out on the boat. Thanks for tuning in.